One of the most fundamental concepts in portfolio management is the idea of rebalancing. It's remarkable that this concept is so poorly understood. So think of a 60-40 portfolio. So 60% equity, 40% fixed income. Periodically, we rebalance. The idea of this new research called strategic rebalancing is co-authored with Nick, Sandy, and Otto, is to drill down on this rebalancing decision. And we uncover a couple of issues that we think are very important for investors. Number one, investors fail to realize that rebalancing is actually an active strategy. So it's usually not thought of a, as an active strategy. It's a mechanical thing that we do, but no, it is an active strategy. An asset falls in value, you buy. An asset rises in value, you sell. That is what rebalancing does, and that is an active strategy. So we need to determine what the implications are of that active strategy. So usually the way the rebalancing is implemented is in a mechanical way, the end of the month, the end of the quarter, the end of the year, we change our weights to get back to our target, let's say 60-40. So if we really think about that, all of the information that might be relevant for asset allocation the climate of the market, the volatility, all of this is ignored. The only thing relevant for this act of rule is the calendar date, and surely that is not optimal. Okay, so what are the implications here? So the implications are pretty simple, that if you're using this naive uh, mechanical rebalancing rule, it's gonna lead to greater drawdowns. Okay, so think of it this way. If the market's plunging, the rule is telling you to rebalance, which means you're buying the asset that's plunging to get back to your uh, target weight. Okay, so this leads to greater drawdowns, and this is documented in our paper. This is sometimes called negative convexity. So a good illustration is the global financial crisis, and the solid line is the... Uh, the portfolio that is rebalanced to 60-40, and the dotted line is not rebalanced. So you can see that the rebalanced portfolio leads to a much greater drawdown. So we provide analysis of this and offer a couple of possibilities in terms of solving this problem. So number one is to keep the mechanical rebalancing program as it is, but make a direct allocation to a strategy that has a property to counteract the negative convexity. So for example, a trend-following strategy uh, in a falling market, in a plunging market, is actually selling. So that provides a counterbalance to the rebalancing. So a trend-following system offers positive convexity, and that tends to balance out uh, the damage that's done by the mechanical rebalancing. So this is a possible solution, but there's another solution. And it's called strategic rebalancing, indeed the title of the paper. So the idea here is to abandon the mechanical rebalancing. So use the same signals from the trend following but instead of a direct allocation to trend, use the signals to inform the timing of the rebalancing. So be strategic about the timing. So if we're in a plunging market situation, the trend signal is negative, delay the rebalancing. Our empirical work looks at many different large drawdowns and we look at very simple trend-following rules, one-month trend, three-month trend, 12-month uh, trend. And you can see that in general, this strategic rebalancing reduces the size of the drawdowns. And the reduction you can see in green for the global financial crisis, the reduction is over 5%. Also notice this doesn't work all the time. So October, 
uh, November 1987, we had a very sharp drop in the market, but a very sharp uh, recovery. And this is a sort of drawdown that the system doesn't really protect you from. But in general, overall, empirically, it does a pretty impressive job. And you can see above um, the, uh, the zero axis, you can see the solid line is the savings induced by the direct allocation uh, to trend systems. And the red dotted line is the strategic rebalancing. And in both of the last two uh, episodes of large drawdowns, uh, both of these systems uh, perform uh, quite favorably. So overall here, what, uh, what is the bottom line? So the bottom line is we think it's important that investors actually realize that rebalancing is an active strategy, but it's not a very good strategy. And it's probably wise to do something about it. So our simple message here is that there is important information in very simple trend signals, one month, one quarter, annual momentum that can be used to strategically time the rebalancing decision. The goal here is to reduce drawdowns and we offer some tools to actually achieve that goal.